after last night, is it going to take some accountability in Game Five to just to get you guys back to where you should be? Oh, I think that uh, they understand what uh, you know. We didn't play well last night, and uh, uh, that's in the past. And uh, we've got guys that will come out tomorrow, I'm sure, with the right spirit and approach, and uh, see if we can play better. Tom Swollen. Mike, what do you learn about a team when it faces elimination? That you're in a hole. <laughs> um, you know, nothing that we don't already know. It's just that, you know, I know these guys will fight, and they, they've done it all the time, and um, I expect the same thing. I expect them to not, you know, last night I thought we got shook and dropped the rope a little bit in the third, but not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. It's going to be... Total, total of what we could do, and I uh, understand there will be mistakes within that, but uh, we're going, we're going to play, you know, put, we're going to put our foot on the gas pedal. We're going to go as hard as we can go. Jonathan Fagan. At this point in the series, how much is today about, and obviously then tomorrow also, just rebuilding the belief that you can beat this team? A lot of it. I mean, that, that's uh, to be able to let go of the past and not worry about it. Uh, that's one. Um, there's a lot of guys that, you know, when we had our meeting that were in the room that have come down from three to one and F one. Uh, you know, I did Phoenix against the Lakers, and uh, James did it, I think, uh, uh, against Clippers, if I'm not mistaken. So they've done it. You know, Denver just now did it against Utah. Uh, so, yeah, we got one game. It's a one-game series. We're going to play the one game. And then uh, one thing we talked about, which we want to give them our best shot. If our best shot's not good enough, so be it. But we have not given in the three losses our best shot. And uh, we need to get back to that. Thank you. Mark Berman. Mike, I know it's an intangible, but you guys have shown fight and spirit and, and intensity in certain stretches. What are some keys of repl- replicating that from the start? Just doing it. Uh, there's no keys. Uh, it's just uh, each guy's mindset has to be uh, clear, uh, wide out, and you know, and go after them. And uh, we can do that. And they've done it, and they will do it. And I, I will be sleeping the night with the knowledge that yeah, we're gonna do it. Now, uh, there is another team that's really good. Um, we'll see how it goes, but they should get our best shot. If that's good enough, then we'll go to the next game after that. Great, Bailey. Mike, just some of the keys to, to, to find uh, a little bit of the, of the transition defense uh, that, that would help you guys uh, slow that down just a little bit. Is that effort, or is that maybe something that, that has just come up in, in terms of, of uh, the way the Lakers have executed that? Well, one is uh, you've got, a, you got a, one of the best passers and big as a freight train coming at you in transition. So the key there is not what you're going to do after they get in transition. The key is to keep out of transition, and that's – not turn the ball over and, and uh, making our passes more on point and uh, be sure we get back and build a wall as much as we can. Having said that, they're going to be good at what they're good at. Uh, but we'll try to eliminate that. But, you know, if you break it down yesterday, um, a lot of our problems is that second chance points we've been doing really well throughout the tournament or through the playoffs and even the bubble of minimizing the difference between there. Yesterday we didn't. We, uh, uh, we had very little, which means we didn't crash the board, and they had a lot, which means they did, and we didn't we didn't box them off. So that's going to be one big point of emphasis. That's about 12 points or so that we can make up, and uh, the rest of it is just uh, you know follow the game plan, performing with mistakes. Uh, but uh, again, you know, tough spot. We got to not drop the road. We got to keep going. Cassidy Hubbard. You were talking about how you and James addressed, you know, being able to dig yourselves out of a 3-1 hole. Is there anything tangible that you guys said from that experience? Or is it just, hey, we did this? No, I'm just, it, it, you know, just it's your experience that nothing's lost. Uh, obviously, we put ourselves in a big hole, and obviously, we didn't play good last night. But, like, well, we, uh, but that's, so why? I mean, we got a one game. We, we need to win one game. We'll worry about the next game later. And if we come to that mindset, and give my best shot at what we do, because what we do is pretty good, then we'll, you know, we'll have a really good chance. Matt Neusel. 
Mike, is there any update on uh, what's happening with Daniel House? No, not that I know. Thank you. Terrence Harris. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good, man. Hey, when you look at this matchup and, and you, you talk about how to, you know, how to fix things, but it looks like, you know, when you look at this matchup, where the Lakers seem to be really good at is is, is with this because of their size and, and length on you guys. Now, how do you coach against that? I mean, how do you fix that issue uh, going forward? I mean, to because it seems like that's what ultimately was, was, was hindering you guys is these guys' ability to kind of overpower the Rockets. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, they did go small uh, the whole game. Um, and they're good at it. And they're, they're a taller, small team. Uh, but again, you overcome it by one, sheer determination. Two, speed, which last night we played a little bit in mud. Uh, and we've just got to have better execution of what we're doing. And uh, I, I think we have uh, a good game plan. I think the guys, you know, will execute it. Not, and like I said, if we give them our best shot, I think that's good enough to win. But, uh, uh, we, we, you know, to answer your question, we're just going to have to play a good pace and move the ball and, and not, you know, not get hung up by a turnover here and there. Come on, Ali. Can you hear that? Simon, can you speak up, please? Hello? There you go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, it's very common for players and coaches to take this one game at a time approach when they're down 3 1. How hard is it to not zoom out and just to focus on that next game? Um, I, I, probably harder for them than us because that's all we got left. So, uh, um, you know, we've been playing long enough and I've been coaching long enough to know that uh, it is an adage, it is something everybody says and it's throw, you throw it out there. But if you have really good professionals and good guys, which we do, um, that's how you approach it. And we got to leave it on the line for 48 minutes, and then uh, you know I got you know then whatever happens afterwards happens afterwards. But uh, uh, there's no reason why, and then the type of job we have and the position we're in, not to just leave it all out for 48 minutes. Tim McMahon. Mike, you guys obviously have had a lot of uh, success offensively over the years, shooting threes, attacking the basket. Lakers are, are trying to take that away. Are there times you, you need to take open mid-range shots that present themselves because of the way they're they're playing defensively? Uh, maybe. I mean, if they're open, uh, we, we don't tell anybody not to do it. Uh, we have our offense set up also on threes and layups and, and, uh, and foul shots. But, uh, you know, I understand what you're saying, but um, there, are, there are opportunities that we get more threes up. There's opportunities we get to the basket better. Might need a better ball movement. But I don't think, I don't know too many times it's like that would be selling for a bad shot. I mean, if that's all you got left, then take it. Take it with confidence. But it's not something that, okay, guys, we're now going to shoot twos because we can't get the other. No, we got to get the other. You know, we got to force ourselves to. Uh, play the right pace and the right speed, the ball movement that that you'll get good shots on the three or layups. We'll take two more. Or Brandon Scott. Hey Mike, is there benefit to desperation in a situation like this? And do you sense that desperation from the team at this point? I do, and there is benefit. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, but it's going to turn into you know playing with a purpose and staying on point and. And not be just, you know, can't, you can't play half crazed. You got to be smart in what you're doing, but yet with enough urgency that uh, that uh, will put the other team, in, 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 you know, behind the eight ball. Last one, Jonathan Dagan. Mike, what needs to be different or better to get James more good looks or against the defense that they're playing? Is it okay that he's getting off the ball so quick and? Not getting as many good looks as he has in other against other defenses. Well, obviously we do, we got to speed up and try to get down there before the defenses come up. We're going to do a couple of things and hopefully get a little bit more room and space. Uh, you know, he's just you know again. There was a lot of games this year that they double teamed almost every time, and you know he didn't have a 25 points, but everybody else would get off, and that's ideal. Uh, there's sometimes he needs to be a little bit more selfish. Uh, 
So a little bit of combination of this and that. But again, uh, we'll be ready for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.